Some time ago, the James Webb Space Telescope spotted a super bizarre space object flying through our galaxy. First of all, it's not orbiting any star. It's a rogue object just drifting through space on its own. Even better, this wandering thing apparently has a cake-like atmosphere, and examining it can be crucial in our future exoplanet research. Plus, it can help us understand how gas giants evolve over time and what might happen to Jupiter in the future. You may object that Earth has a layered atmosphere too, with five major and several secondary layers. But on Earth, the air is mostly nitrogen and oxygen. As for other planets, they're different. Take Venus, for example, where the atmosphere is super thick and filled with sulfuric acid. There are exoplanets with water vapor clouds, or ones where the clouds are literally made of hot sand. But what about our rogue object? By the way, I have no clue why it got this reputation, but for some reason, scientists chose to call it SIMP. Ouch! Anyway, it seems to have its own unique combo, with cloud patches and weird chemical reactions happening high up. It is covered in clouds made of iron and magnesium, and its atmosphere has carbon-based chemicals floating around. Scientists have spotted auroras on it. Yep, like the northern lights we have on Earth, but way out in deep space. It's the very first time researchers have been able to do a sort of weather report on a rogue object like this. The next weirdness? The object doesn't really fit into any box. It's not a regular planet because it doesn't orbit a star. But it's also smaller than a brown dwarf, which is something like a failed star. So it's something in between. Not quite a planet, not quite a star. And while it's not dangerous in the we're all doomed kind of way, scientists say rogue objects like this could actually mess things up pretty seriously if they wandered too close to a solar system. Their gravity might throw off the orbits of planets, which could lead to instability or even space collisions. So yeah, while our rogue friend is not a threat right now, it might become one in the future. Now, this rogue object has some crazy stuff going on. First off, its day is only 2.4 hours long. Like, imagine the sun rising and setting in that time. That's real fast. It's also hanging out about 20 light years away in the Carina Nebula which isn't super far in space terms. Another thing that makes this guy special is the fact that it's the brightest free-floating object of its kind that we can see from the Northern Hemisphere. And since it's just drifting in space without a nearby star messing with our view, it's been directly photographed by telescopes, like NASA's Spitzer. That's actually super rare for stuff this faint and far. When scientists checked it out in infrared, aka heat vision, they noticed that the atmosphere of this rogue object was acting weird, like it kept changing, sometimes more heat, sometimes less. Something funky was going on, but what exactly? So, in July 2023, one team of scientists used the James Webb Space Telescope to dig deeper. They pointed it at SIMP and gathered a ton of data, around 6,000 measurements in just a few hours. First, they looked at shortwave radiation, which is kind of like high-energy heat, and then they did the same with longer waves a few hours later. They discovered that the brightness changed differently depending on the wavelength. Some parts of the atmosphere got brighter, some dimmer, and some didn't change at all. It was all over the place, but they noticed a pattern. All the changes fell into three groups. Each group had its own vibe, like its own little signature of what was going on in the atmosphere. And it turned out that the mysterious object wasn't just floating alone in space. It was super dynamic, with layers of clouds and gases doing their own thing. It could mean three different things were going on in the atmosphere. To figure out what exactly was behind all this, they built models of the rogue object's atmosphere. Apparently, the first group of curves likely came from low clouds made of iron. Yeah iron, like actual metal clouds. The second group seemed to come from higher clouds made of this mineral called forsterite, which is basically a magnesium-rich crystal. 
And it looks like these cloud layers aren't smooth, they're patchy. That patchiness could explain why the light coming from them keeps changing so much. As for the third group of light patterns, they weren't coming from clouds at all. The light seemed to be coming from way above the clouds, from what they think are hot spots in the atmosphere. These hot spots are probably connected to radio auroras, kind of like Earth's northern lights, but happening in the radio part of the light spectrum instead of visible light. But even after all that modeling, there were still some mysteries left. Like the first group of curves was all over the place, more than they expected. So they think it might be because of carbon-based gases like carbon monoxide floating around. They might absorb certain types of light at random times. In any case, this is the first time we've actually seen this kind of atmospheric chaos directly. But the few hours the researchers spent watching it weren't enough to fully figure it out. To really get the full picture, they'll need days of data, and they're hoping to use NASA's Nancy Grace Roman Space Telescope, set to launch in 2027, to dive even deeper. Even though this mysterious object is not a rogue planet, they're definitely worth mentioning. These are basically planets that got kicked out of their home solar system. Yeah, like straight up evicted. When a planet forms, it's usually hanging out with a bunch of other planets around a star. But early on, things can get super chaotic. You know, planets crashing, shifting, getting too close to each other. And sometimes, one gets yeeted right out of the system. So since they're not tied to a star, these rogue planets are just cruising through the galaxy, totally solo. If they happen to float near something massive, like a star or a black hole, that thing's gravity can tug at them. But otherwise, they just keep drifting. Most of them probably got booted when their system was still forming, and everything was a mess. But according to a NASA scientist, even mature systems can throw a planet out if the orbit gets too weird or something big knocks into them. Now, the next planet we gotta discuss isn't rogue. It has a parent star and all. But there's another cool thing about it. It's still a baby in the middle of forming, and it's pretty rare to catch in action. The baby is already about three times the size of Jupiter, the largest planet in the solar system. It's part of a system about 400 light years away. It's been growing for about 5 million years, munching on gas and dust from the disk around its star, kinda like a cosmic buffet. But the thing is, when astronomers checked out the chemicals in the planet's atmosphere, using a big telescope in Hawaii, things didn't add up. They were specifically looking at carbon monoxide and water, which can help figure out how much carbon and oxygen is floating around in that atmosphere. Turns out, the planet's chemical mix doesn't quite match the stuff in the disk it's forming from. That's a big deal because it goes against what scientists thought they knew about how planets are supposed to form. Basically, it's saying, Hey, your fancy models might be a bit too simple. Planets are supposed to form by clumps of gas and dust crashing into each other and sticking together. Over time, they build up into full-blown planets. If that's true, then planets and their surrounding gas should have the same kind of stuff in them, chemically speaking. But PDS-70b is doing its own thing. So the scientists came up with two ideas to explain what was going on. It might be forming from solid stuff, like dust and ice, not just the gas in the disk. That solid material has carbon and oxygen trapped inside. So, by the time it melts and goes into the planet, it's already changed the chemistry. Or the gas in the disk got more carbon after the planet already formed. Luckily, there's another planet in the same system, PDS-70c. And scientists are hoping that by checking it out too, they'll be able to figure out the truth. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.